In this lesson, we're going to take a quick look at the causes of World War I. I say quick because it's expected that you've already had some background on this from prior classes before taking U.S. history. But let's dive in. Teachers often like to use one of two acronyms, either MAIN, M-A-I-N, or MANIA, like the one that you see here, to help you remember the causes of World War I. My preference is to use mania, and that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look at what the M stands for. The M is militarism, and the nations of Europe were building up large armies. I can show you some numbers here. These numbers that you see indicate the numbers of soldiers in millions. Uh, so we can see here that Great Britain had about a million soldiers, France about 4 million, Russia about 6 million, Austria-Hungary 3 million, Germany about 4,500,000. Right? Very large armies. And when these armies come together to clash, we are talking the uh, better uh, part of 17 million people that are going to be fighting in this war. So M is for militarism. Let's now take a look at the first A. The first A in mania represents the secret alliances that existed in Europe at the time. They're outlined here in red and dark blue. In red, known as the Triple, the triple Entente, we have Russia, France, and Britain. And in blue, you can see the Triple Alliance. We have Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Germany. Don't worry about the others at the moment for now, although Serbia is going to come in and play a major role in the start of World War I. That being said, these countries, these in these two different alliances, basically agreed that if one country got into a military situation, that the others would come and help out. Keep in mind that they were secret. The other countries of the world didn't know that each of these three separate countries were in alliances with each other. <laughs> until war breaks out and it becomes very clear that that was the case and we end up with a continent-wide war on our hands. The political cartoon here illustrates the alliance system where Serbia, who is going to essentially cause the war to start, is hit by Austria, who is then hit by Russia, etc., etc., on the way back, indicating the, the alliance system kicking in. So M is militarism. The first A is the alliances. Let's take a look at the N. N stands for nationalism. And I've taken a picture of a family in the United States with the American flag behind. Honestly, in this lesson, I should not have the American flag because this does not involve the United States, but I just chose the picture, uh, one, because it was cute, <laughs> and uh, two, because it shows patriotism, which is essentially what nationalism is. It's pride in one's country. It's very much patriotism. I would describe nationalism, though, with a bit of a harder edge to it. All right? it's, it's, it is pride in one's country, but it really is also a belief that... that um, my country is best. My country is better than yours. All right. So there was a sense uh, in among the nations of Europe uh, where those nations individually believed that their nations were better than their neighbors were. Again, combine this with the fact that each of these nations had large armies, uh, and we've got the beginnings of potential problems. This cartoon shows problems that were occurring in Europe, specifically in the Balkan Peninsula. And we see uh, leaders trying to put the lid on the kettle of trouble uh, in the Balkans. Let's take a look at the map at a map of the Balkan Peninsula to get a sense of what the troubles were over there. This is the Balkan Peninsula area of uh, South Central Europe, uh, circa 1911, as the map indicates. And what you have in Montenegro, Serbia, Bosnia, or uh, Croatia above it, a uh, lot of different um, ethnic 
people that don't really get along with each other. All right, so through throughout history, this period, this this area has been one of invasion and takeover. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can see Bosnia right here, which is really going to play an integral role in the start of World War One, uh, was at that moment in time occupied by Austria-Hungary, and I don't think that they were particularly happy about that. I know that Serbia wasn't. Uh, we can move to a, a more modern day map and you can see here that these different ethnic groups are more in control of, of what are now independent countries. So we have militarism, the alliances, and nationalism. Let's take a look at the eye which is imperialism. The nations of Europe were uh, using their large militaries uh, in a scramble for colonies. We see here in 1900 Africa had been colonized by uh, many of the countries of Europe. Uh, Asia had been colonized by a number of different countries in Europe and, and they were out to uh, gain the natural resources that existed in some of these areas, but there was also a pride factor. They were using their militaries to conquer territories. Uh, they were scrambling against each other as neighbors in Europe to conquer different territories. Again, uh, and to some extent, for, for pride. So if we take a look at this cartoon, and at the stuff that we've been looking at thus far in this lesson between the militarism, the alliances, imperialism, nationalism, the difficulties in the Balkans, uh, we've got a powder keg. We've got a very explosive situation. Uh, all we really need is an event that is going to set all of this into motion. That event is depicted here by the match that is about to light this fire. That match is Sarajevo. In our acronym mania, it's the last A, which stands for assassination. And we can see here, June 28, 1914, Archduke Fran Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary was in Bosnia, specifically in the city of Sarajevo, with his wife. We see that in the top, in the photo on the top right. And they were assassinated. They were assassinated by a Serbian nationalist. Uh, who felt that Bosnia should not be a part of Austria-Hungary, that Bosnia should be uh, uh, independent or part of Serbia. There were a number of Serbians living in Bosnia, as well as Bosnians, of course. That Serbian nationalist was Gavrilo Princip, and he was captured. He's pictured here. The handgun that was used is pictured here. Uh, he was later executed. The headline from the New York Times the day after this took place. So we've got all of our letters here. We just need to see how the start of the war actually plays out. Do keep in mind militarism, the alliances, nationalism, and imperialism are more longer term causes, causes that have been around for some time. It's the last day, the assassination of the Archduke. That is the match that lights the fuse that causes the explosion, or in this case, the war. So we see from the Times headline here, I should probably try and make this a little bit larger for you. Austria formally declares war on Serbia. We see in the headline, Russia threatens already moving troops. The connection here we can understand that Austria blames Serbia for a Serbian nationalist assassinating Austria-Hungary's heir to the throne. The Archduke was next in line to take the throne in Austria-Hungary. The connection with Russia is that Serbia and Russia were, have been 
uh, friends for a very long time. They still are today. All right, uh, and Russia decides to come and help their friend, Serbia. So we've got Austria, Hungary. Remember, they were one of the powers in the Triple Alliance. And then we have Russia, one of the other powers in the Triple Entente, fighting each other. This is going to lead to the alliances. So instead of two countries fighting each other, or three if we include Serbia, you now have a continental war seen in this map. We've got the central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary. We're going to have a couple of others, the Ottoman Empire being a, a key helper there. Italy is ultimately going to switch sides. Uh, late in the war, join the Allied side. We see Great Britain and France and Russia. We see a couple of other countries that decided to assist the Allies. And that brings us to how the end of how World War I got started. All right, we've got our acronym mania, and we see the militarism, the alliances, nationalism, imperialism, and the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. The United States is watching. The United States is well aware the war started. Uh, the United States is initially going to remain neutral, but we will talk about the events that lead the United States ultimately into World War I in the next lesson.